Just Me, a place to be me, where you get to experience life. Life is a journey, not a guided tour. If you want the rainbow, you have to go through the rain. Welcome back, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are entering the month of October, and October means that we have a new topic for discussion. So, yes. <laughs> so this month, we have named the month in the series, The Freaks Come Out. So, Miss Tracy, take us, lead us. What is this? What are we about to be talking about this month? As Thought and Pepper used to say back in the day, let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. So that's the topic of the month. We are going to be talking about sex. Not sex in general, but just talking about sex. Because we do know that communication is key. Communication is key in any relationship. And sex can be one of those topics that it is so difficult to talk about. So we're going to make it a little bit easy. Talking about sex within your relationship is crucial for several different reasons. And that's building intimacy and trust, addressing needs and expectations, enhancing mutual pleasure, promoting sexual health and safety, navigating changes in libido, resolving sexual issues, preventing infidelity and miscommunication, reducing shame and stigma, and supporting emotional well-being. That's nine different areas that we're going to try to touch base not in this one episode so guess what you're going to come back next week and a week after that and we're going to continue this conversation as we find the importance of communicating about sex and i got personal experiences with all of them so i'm ready to dive in so so we're <laughs> going to talk about that first one about building intimacy and trust so what does that mean so that's a good question because sex has always been or typically has been a discussion that is avoided with many people, whether they are dating, whether they are in a um, monogamous relationship where they are in various different relationships. So building that intimacy and that trust. Some people will say that sex is a very intimate and close knit type of thing where I'm connecting to the person, where I'm sharing myself, my body, um, my emotions. And some people even seeing, see it as a transfer of energy. So for one person, this sex, the action of sex, could be a lot more than just the physical act. And so having those conversations to start with will under help you understand where that person is and how they view sex. And therefore, further building that trust of, okay, am I going to put you in this category of, hey, this is a person that I'm just having sex with? Or am I going to put you in another category as, hey, this is a person that I am actually experiencing a little bit more intimacy, soul ties, spiritual exchange with? And there are other, there are other categories that people can also place their partners in, but it helps one person navigate the relationship in an understanding and open way. What do you guys think? Well, you know, that is correct. Um, especially when you said um, understanding, because I would think that if we are talking about sex, it will build that intimacy and that desire uh, as it relates to me, as it relates to me wanting to have sex with you and being more in the present because I have an understanding as it relates to what we are doing. So therefore, it is very important that, you know, we have these open discussions because it will build me up as it relates to what we're about to do. And it will probably make me more aroused or more involved as it relates to the intimacy. But but a lot of challenges comes with that because in talking about it, it does um, make you more vulnerable. And some people are not comfortable being that vulnerable. Like I want to do the business, but you don't have to know. Like I'm not going to share nothing else. It's just about the act. 
Um, it could expose some secrets because, you know, you look like a church girl, but when you get behind them sheets, my goodness, you be doing them tricks. So, and people look at you kind of different. It could um, influence um, anxiety, just the, the thought about it, because you might have had um, situations in your life that happened that caused, you know, some trauma that now as an adult, um, that when it comes to it, you have a difficult time talking about it. How you feel about yourself could cause you challenges to do it. But the like you were saying, it is a very important um, in a partnership so both people understand how you feel and why you feel that way. So if you, the only way to do it is to like talk about it instead of having somebody figure it out. And, I, and I'll use an example. So if, um, if someone touches you on your shoulder and you jump, now that person might went to get a hug I'm trying to hug you, but every time I want to go to hug you, you always jump. But if they know that the reason why you jump is because I, the person that attacked me used to come from behind. So whenever somebody approaches me from behind, causes me to jump. It's not like I'm rejecting you. It's just I'm reliving something. But if I talk that with my partner and they understand, I can still hug her. But this time I got to come from the front until we, until she's able to you know, figure those things out or he is able to figure those things out. So why it is important to talk about it, we do know that challenges do come up, but I encourage people to um, push through those challenges because of the importance, because your partner needs to know how you feel, why you feel and, and, and vice versa. You need to know, you know, when I, if I do this, is this going to make that person feel a certain way in a good way or in a bad way? Because you think um, is right. And I think we did an episode like on love language or, and you know, what's good for me might not be good for somebody else, but I think it was a great idea. So it's, it's just important. I say that vulnerability is there, but that's what intimacy is about. You know, you, 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 you got to open it all up. <laughs> you you got to take a risk trust and if that is what you if you want where we're talking about building intimacy and trust um opposed to just doing the physical act of sexual intercourse and i, I like what you said because to have sex with somebody depending on the person can be a lot easier than being vulnerable emotionally vulnerable with somebody mm -hmm. and so when we think about having those concepts around or having those conversations around sex that also can come with a lot of emotion, other emotional vulnerability that maybe people are not comfortable with having. And so far too often, this conversation around sex doesn't happen. And then we end up with false expectations or jaded expectations down the, down the road. So expectations, especially at a young age, younger age, maybe in early 20s, may be, hey, I'm having sex with this person, so now we're dating. Mm -hmm. When, if we have that conversation, myself and my partner have this conversation, then we can understand that, hey, this person views sex completely differently than how I may be viewing sex or I may, how I understand sex to be. So having those conversations, um, whether they are uncomfortable, definitely is important, but it also allows you to learn more about yourself and what insecurities you have that you are not saying. And so sometimes we have to look down deep down inside of ourselves to say, hey, I'm not having a conversation around sex with this person because I'm truly not comfortable with this, that, and third of myself. And so for me to have to actually communicate that to somebody else, that makes me feel uncomfortable. That makes me feel vulnerable. And therefore, I'm not able to divulge that enough and trust that person with those emotions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like that. And so even that um, statement um, that was said about building intimacy and trust, it says open discussions about sex fosters emotional intimacy and trust. When partners are vulnerable and honest about their desires or preferences and concerns, it deepens their connection and strengthens the bond. And, and that's that part most people are not willing to be really honest about um, those desires. It's like, I keep it in my head and I want my partner to figure it out. Or if I um, do a little this or kind of opposed to telling them, I try to, 
I'm hoping that they figure this out on their own, giving them hints or clues. Just open your mouth and, and say what it is and, and to share and back and forth. And again, to better understand, okay, this is what makes him or her tick. This is what makes me tick. So they really know, opposed like again, not having to figure out. And again, what I think will make you feel good actually does not. Or what you think and be like, you know, every time, why you been rubbing my knee? Oh, I've been rubbing your knee for the past 20 years. You ain't say nothing. It don't make me feel good, but you just like doing it. It really irritates me. So, but they'll keep doing it until, because you've never said nothing. But the whole time for 20 years, he's been squeezing my knee, irritating me. But according to him, he might think, oh, she must love it. Because at least I'm touching, but do something else. Hold my hand. Or and someone is yeah. Yeah. And someone doesn't know unless you, you communicate that. Um, I know for me, I am currently in the dating arena mm -hmm. and I will be transparent. Um, so I've been talking to different partners or different potential partners online. And there was one individual who, you know, we hit it off. Um, there was a connection. So we decided to speak with each other over the phone. Um, great communication as far as topics, conversations about what you look for in the future. Um, what are your expectations for family? Um, how do you enjoy your free time? How do you balance work and life? And then um, the individual I spoke with, um, he mentioned, you know, so what is your sexual, your sexual energy and your sexual drive? And I, I shared what I typically um, experience within my own sexual preferences. And he said that it's not going to work for him. And mm -hmm. that's okay. Right. And I had to take a step back. And, you know, we set our pleasantries and everything, you know, got off the phone. And I'll be honest, the the little girl in me, the, and I'm 37, but the little girl in me was like, dang, I got rejected. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to, I need to w figure something out, or maybe I need to switch up my answer next time. And then the adult, me, came mm -hmm. back and said, you have to be true to yourself. That's right. And if that's not going to work for you, that's okay. That doesn't mean that you're rejected. That just means that those types of energy just didn't align and didn't match up. Everything else was good. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, we didn't solve. We ready to do this. All right. Like, let's meet up. And then he asked the question about sex. Mm -hmm. And I shared my truth. He shared his truth. And we recognized that our priorities around sex didn't match up. Right, and right. if that's something that in his category of relationship priorities that he needs and he wants, and that's something, and a, and I want and need something different, that long term is going to be a very stressful relationship. But you saved a whole lot of time and a whole lot. Imagine being in that relationship even even for a year, and then come, then be like, well, no, this is not going to work just because of that one thing. And if you had that conversation twelve months ago. Now it's not feel like I wasted time, but you knew from the beginning that this is how I, this is who I am. This is how I am. And you like, we all say, oh, I'm going to change him. Or I'm going to change her once we get married or once he start dating me and all that stuff. No, I'm still, that's, it's my choice. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. And if you know that and you can, and like he said, like, mm, everything else is good, but this is, this is important to me. Right. I'm going to give you, let you, you do you and you, and let me do me. And that's okay. I would say, thank you. Yes. That's, that's being an adult instead of, well, let me try and figure it out because you knew in the beginning and cause I'm going to be mad later on. He's like, well, I told you that in the beginning that I didn't do X, Y, and Z or I like X, Y, and Z. And they said, well, yeah, but I like it 100 and you only like it two. Yeah. I Don't thought you would change and nothing changes. So it is good. To, to open up from day one. And I, and I tell you, I know um, when, me, when me and my husband was dating, we would have some um, very deep conversations. And I would tell my friends, it's like, how you talking to her? And then my boyfriend like that, you don't supposed to share that? And I'm like, well, why? Like, oh no, he need to know this about me. And then when you know that, and and that and that was the, that was the beauty. And I would say now we've been together um, thirty something years, I think. What year is this? Eighty? Yeah, it's been a long time, right? 
But um, <laughs> hope you don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, over thirty. But yeah, it's it's okay. That that long we've been together that long. But to to just to say, just to applaud that I've been able to be me, and I think that's why it's really lasted. I've always, he's always allowed me to be me. I have not had to be fake and I've been fake. In, you, you change yourself to do this. Oh, he like it seven days a week and I only like it too, but I'm gonna keep doing it. I can't work, but I ain't gonna say I'm not. I got medical conditions, something. But you do this trying to change somebody. Then when you find yourself out of that relationship, you don't even know who you are because you keep changing and changing and changing. Now you become everything Eddie wanted you to be, Bobby wanted you to be, Michael wanted you to be. And you lost yourself. But if you stay true to yourself from day one, we want to open up about sex. This is what I do. This is what I don't do. And if they can't get with it, are you open? I'm open. But if I don't like it, but if you close and say, no, you, you I only can be with a person that does X, Y, and Z or doesn't do LMNOP, then you need to find out from the beginning and always have those conversations. And if you're with somebody, again, you're trying to build something, you should have trusted that person enough that I've, I'm going to trust you with my heart and my feelings. I should be able to tell you if the good, the bad, and the ugly. I should be able to open my mouth and let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. And say when, when and, and sex is, that's that's a hot topic because because we, we come in with these, um, again, expectations or, oh, I used to love it when a person say, I'm going to do all this. And then after the act, be like, oh, okay, bro, you a little short. A little short. What happened? Did all that talking? But but then so but if we 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 got to talk. We we got to talk about it. We got to open up. And if if you're with somebody and you plan on going past first base, be open and honest so you know what you're getting or what you're not getting. If that's okay with you, then I would say either proceed forward or you say deuces. And that does. Go ahead, Ms. Rina. And I hear what both of you all said, uh, have said. What could have had taken place, which it did not, and then that lets us know, too, as it leads to accountability, there was not any room to compromise. Mm-hmm. Because there could have been a sense of compromise, like, hey, he that person may not be aware of certain things, but I'm willing to learn. But we were listening, and we were hearing within that conversation as it like to Sasha and that guy was there was no compromise. Mm-hmm. If you find someone and then these conversations start off early, we can see before we get to the next point, are you willing to compromise at how it looks? So yeah, we don't yeah. want it to be black and white. Mm-hmm. It could be black and white like that, open and shut. But if we're willing to compromise, what are we, what does that look like? And then accountability comes. And and I definitely like that because as we grow older, our desires and our things that make us feel pleasured and our comfort change. And so yes. with that, the same thing that I enjoyed when I was in my 20s is not going to be the same thing I enjoy in my 30s, just because we grow and we're, and we're different. So having starting off and having practicing these conversations will definitely help you when you do have long-term relationships because you have to be able to communicate your changes with your partner but but that i like how you said that because that for me it leads into that other um crucial reason for having the what the points of communication and talking about it um sex is addressing the needs and expectations because the stuff changes like you said, 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60. And whoo, I'm close to, yeah, close to that six zero and 70, 80. Sex look a little, your body changes, things oh. come up. And like you said, you, you have um different um sexual disorders might show up um yes. within there. And so now what you used to can do, you can't do anymore. Not because you don't want to, just physically you can't. So then, then what? So if you're not talking about it again, anxiety is going to hit up. De- depression is going to sit, come in. Low self-esteem can come in because if some things start hitting you, imagine if you was, um, how you say, um, king of the jungle. And now you can't swing no more. Things happen. 
Yeah, you, 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 you know what I'm saying. You know them blue pills is out there. They got them blue and white. They still work. But and you know what? Be natural. Go ahead, Miss Sasha. You know what? There is also because just like men have certain sexual um, disorders, there are women that also have sexual disorders mm -hmm. as well, where our our lubrication in our vagina just doesn't hit the way it used to anymore. So there, there, there's so many different things, um, premenopausal, perimenopausal, mm -hmm. um, all of those things. Yeah. yeah. The, the, even the, the, the oh, sexual ahead. dysfunction, even when, even when it comes to arousal, like imagine of, you know, the, the women not having orgasms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, men worried about not getting it up. That's not, that's not the only thing that's in the bedroom now. So going through all that and, and again, not being able to get anything out of it and I can't talk to you about it. So, so, so it's important. So you need to know why I don't want to be touched or why I don't, why I, I, why I just want to kiss, why I just want to hold hands or why you don't want to be touched because now you, you can't perform the way you used to perform because of medical conditions or something like that. But I still expect this within our relationship because I'm only 25. I can't live like this for the next 25 years. So, so then what? Yeah. So basically what you're saying is, is that, you know, really going back to the first question, as it, I mean, first statement, building intimacy and trust, you have to look at the characteristics of this person. Are they very open? Are they very flexible? You know, are they willing to compromise? as it relates to us building this relationship, because what you all have expressed is that as we navigate and move through life, things change. So mm -hmm. it's very important that you have a mate that is willing to work with you, but also willing to compromise um, as we navigate through those changes. Mm -hmm. Because our bodies change. So certain ways that we used to get orga orgasms 20, 20 years ago may not be the same way now. So you got to make sure or it's very important that you make sure that we have these conversations as it relates to discussing these changes. And if we're willing to work together to ensure that we are doing what we need to help continue to maintain that sexual relationship. Awesome. Awesome. Good conversation, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we will definitely be talking about other nuances and important um, topics around sex and talking about sex in our relationships. So until next time, take care of yourself that was so that we can all take care of each other, guys. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Just Me Therapy podcast. If you are seeking further one-on-one -on -one diagnoses, interventions, and treatment plans, please consider scheduling an appointment with an individual counselor at Journeys Counseling Center, located in Greensboro, North Carolina. Journeys can be reached at 336-294-1349. The mission of Just Me Therapy podcast is to use authentic conversations to uplift one's mind, body, and soul. The goal of Just Me Therapy is to offer affordable education and insight to individuals who experience financial barriers to accessing individualized behavioral health care services. With that being said, the information, including opinions, advice, and recommendations discussed in this podcast are intended for individual, informational, and educational purposes only. Such information is not intended to substitute the recommendations of your own licensed therapist or healthcare professional. Although we are licensed behavioral health professionals, we are not your licensed behavioral health professional. As a result, the advice mentioned on this podcast should not replace the recommendations offered by your own qualified health professional.